and one, Mrs. Giffords here, and pasta! It's been so great getting to meet and work with all of you this week. I have had so much fun. So this week we worked on learning the parts of our instrument, the do's and don'ts of those parts, and just a quick refresher, I'm going to go over the parts of those instruments in case you don't remember. I'm going to use my violin, but the parts apply for all of the different instruments. Up top here we have the scroll. You can kind of think of it like the head of your body. These are the pegs. Remember, never, ever, ever touch the pegs. Neither your parents or your aunt or uncle or your goldfish. Nobody touches the pegs. The pegs tune the strings, and if you turn them the wrong way, you will break one of those strings. Okay, remember the story I told you about when I was in fourth grade, and I broke three of my strings. My mom was very unhappy. So, we have the scroll, the pegs, the fingerboard, where our fingers go. The back here is the neck. Remember, this is the little thumb spot you're going to hear me talk quite a bit about. Here we have the shoulders of the instrument. We have our bridge, which is held in place by tension. It's not glued on. It's held in place by the tension of the strings, um, holding the entire instrument together. The F hole. These are the fine tuners. The tail piece. The chin rest. And on violin and violas, you will have the end button. So boys and girls, we worked on learning rest position and playing position this week. I'm going to go over that again really quick. So for the next couple of, next video or two, you're going to see that I'm going to hold my instrument. Um, I'm going to do the same that you're going to be doing. So we're going to match up with our sides. Technically, I would be holding the instrument opposite, okay? So eventually you're going to see me switch over with that. But for today, just so you can continue to mirror me, I will be holding my instrument technically on the wrong side for me, but it'll look right for you, okay? So remember, when we get ourselves into rest position, we are holding our instrument in our left hand. Our right hand is making that chicken wing. Our chicken wing gets caught in the tree and our instrument comes on the side of our body. We wrap around our arm and hold at the shoulder. That's rest position. So remember, when you're not playing or your instrument's not in its case, you're holding your instrument in rest position. And you can see, I can look down and see my bridge. I'm just gonna move my camera a little bit more. Let's see if this is a little better. Much better. So, rest position. When we do the steps of going into playing position, our feet are spread. Again, this is just your violin and viola. Um, soon I will upload one for cello and bass. So, our feet are spread. Thumbs up for being so awesome. Our thumb's going to come to that thumb spot that I told you all about. Thumb comes to the thumb spot. Fingers wrap around. And now our instrument's going to come out in front of us. Very carefully, we're going to tip our scroll to the ground. And then we're going to take our end button to our ear. I hope you cleaned it this morning. Our violin or viola is going to slide down. And our chin comes over to meet the chin rest. It's important to note, boys and girls, I'm not pulling out my violin right in front of me or my viola. I'm keeping it off to the side on my shoulder. Good. So I'm going to lift my chicken wing one more time. Bring my instrument back into a rest position. Go through the steps of playing position one more time. Feet are spread. Thumbs up for being so cool. Thumb comes onto that thumb spot. Wrap those fingers around. Instrument comes out in front. Hold carefully. Tip that scroll to the ground. Bring that end button to your ear. Slide down your instrument. Chin comes over and rests on the chin. Rest. 
Nice job, guys. So wave to me with the hand not holding your instrument. And that hand's going to make a fist. Your thumb and your pointer finger are going to come out. La claw. Your thumb is going to go right on the fingerboard and rest right on it. Your pointer finger is going to curl over and you're going to find the D string. For violin players, the D string is the second to the lowest string, the second to the thickest string. Viola players, the D string is the second to the highest string. And the D string sounds like this. feeling comfortable with the D string and then also the A string. So for violin players, the A string is your second to the highest string. And viola players, the A string is your highest string, your thinnest string. And the A string sounds like this. So boys and girls, you're going to be practicing feeling comfortable with the D string and the A string and also working in your book on pages four and five. If you ever have any questions, you can always email me and I will get back to you right away. I can't wait until next week so we can work more and play more. Have a great week, guys. Bye-bye.